Welcome back to the workshop. My name is Cassandra. I am the Vintage Arcade Gal. And on um, this episode, we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to look at some options for multiple arcade games in one cabinet. Now, uh, in things like multi-cades and multi-games, uh, we're going to take a look at something specific called a bit kit, which is something I just got, which is uh, pretty neat. So it plays uh, some interesting games. But first up, we're going to take a look at our Simpsons project. We have moved very much forward with it and it's starting to look pretty amazing. If you remember last time, um, it was kind of in a number of pieces. So let's join our project. All right, so if you remember from our previous episodes, we have our water damaged and front damaged Simpsons cabinet. We've rebuilt the front panel. And then last time we dramatically cut off the bottom of the cabinet to rebuild the sides and the back. And this time we are going to reassemble this thing with the new bottom and connect it to the old top. So despite our best efforts, when we went to assemble, kind of faux assemble the first time, our bottom and our top pieces, we found that our edge was not as perfectly even as we had wished. So what we had to do was carefully measure uh, the bottom edges where they were cut on both sides and use our router to just even them out so uh, they would slide together when we put our biscuits in as evenly as possible. Here we are measuring out our biscuit area. Um, and our router there to even out the actual cabinet. And there it fits together and it's much more even and we can start putting in our biscuits. So to use biscuits, which are these little wood chip things, and they come in different sizes, you have your biscuit joiner, which is above. And what this does basically is it cuts a slot evenly in the side of the wood and you adjust it for the thickness of the wood. And you just kind of punch it with this tiny little saw here and that formulates a hole. And then you put the biscuit in, it sits pretty flush in there. And if you've done your math correctly on both sides of the wood, when you glue them all together, the biscuits help retain the rigidity of the actual, whatever you're reassembling. And it's a pretty cool little device actually. And it's, if you do your math correctly and you of course measure twice and cut once, everything works out pretty well, especially after our cut. We verified that it was even with the router. Uh, we were pretty happy with the way these things were going to line up. Once we felt we had an even fit for our pieces and our biscuits, we went ahead and started the final assembly of the bottom, actually screwing the bottom pieces together. And what this required was the creation of these little guide pieces that were in the original part of the bottom of the cabinet. We made ours just a little more stout. Uh, so we cut our little joiner pieces and then of course we ended up putting our uh, guide holes for our screws so we wouldn't split the wood. And lo and behold, it is assembled and we're kind of ready here. Now you can kind of see a little more detail, the biscuit and the overlap uh, and this little support piece on the side was to be screwed in when the cabinet was finally assembled just for a little bit more rigidity. And we are ready to try to see if these two things can get together on a more permanent basis now. <laughs> so being somewhat clever, how we did this was we laid the bottom piece and the original top piece on our appliance alley that we used to move around games. And that way we kind of slide these things together off the floor and make sure everything was lined up correctly. And lo and behold, we were really, really happy how this was lining up. It was almost just perfect. So with that in mind, we went ahead and started planning our da da da, gluing it together with wood glue. And so just using some Gorilla wood glue here, getting it right in the biscuits and along the edge, um, being pretty generous with the glue, uh, which is not a bad thing, but not too crazy. And then we tipped it up on its side as it slid down and voila, uh, the game is now glued together. And then inside we have our little retaining kind of uh, extra supports we made to keep it nice and flush while it dried. And we thought this was rather clever 
so this way we wouldn't use clamps, we just use the weight of the game and uh, use that as the support to keep it all glued together while it dried. And uh, it was pretty even Steven. We were kind of shocked actually. So after giving it a couple days to dry and settle down, uh, one of the sides which was much more even than the other as far as a gap in the wood. So this is easily solved and I knew this was going to be a problem. We were going to have some sort of little bit of a, a er in between the two pieces. So that's where the Bondo comes in to fill in that gap. So once we prime the sides with primer paint and go to put our side art on, there won't be any sort of ridge that sticks out through the art or puckers through, everything will be as even as possible. And Bondo is great for these kind of repairs and just general repairs and any sort of arcade game uh, restoration project you might have. You just need to make sure you get some good Bondo and also give it time to dry before you attempt to sand it. And I find sanding it with a very fine sandpaper, like a 320 compared to something much more toothy like an 80, uh, will get you better results. You just have to be a little patient. Once that was all sorted out, we figured out that our front piece was a little tiny bit too wide and wasn't quite flush for the T-molding slot. So what we needed to do here was again route just a, like a millimeter off the entire width so everything on the front was even Steven, um, just the barest amount here just so the T-molding would sit flush and true. We did this on both sides. The back was pretty good. It was off on one little bit of side, so I just used the sander. And here we are making our T-molding slot with the router bit. And, uh, you know, just measuring there. You can see kind of on the left there the uh, little doink where the two pieces are together. But, boy, it's pretty flush together now. And we're pretty happy with how this all turned out. While we're doing all this gluing and rebuilding, I went ahead and re-glued a top piece near the top of the cabinet where the marquee sits and the team molding above it, which had become uh, loose and brittle. It wasn't broken, it just needed to be re-glued to make sure the team molding would hold once we reassembled the cabinet. The last thing we're going to address this time around is this top bracket that holds the monitor in. And I've seen some lazy uh, attempts at fixing things in my life, but this has got to be the worst. Someone took a drill at some point and instead of putting a new monitor in and changing the bracket around for the monitor, they simply drilled out a secondary set of holes using a drill, and it's just a mess. I was going to take this piece of wood out and put a new piece in, but unfortunately it is so elaborately glued and bolted in there from the factory. Um, it just didn't make any sense, and the piece of wood is still very rigid. It's not particle board like the rest of the wood. So what we did was just cut out as evenly as possible a much better finite square of this wood using both a hand saw and just the saber saw and then we went in with a sander and made it as even as possible and glued in some new replacement pieces. Despite the measuring just because it was so hard to get to this, um, this required a little bit of trial and error as far as sanding and clamping to get these two pieces right and here you can see i'm kind of buffing out it just made more sense to sand these and kind of refit them time and again as a puzzle piece and it wasn't so bad it it did take a little bit of patience though to get this just perfectly right since the pieces were in a place that we couldn't quite cut as evenly as we wanted to and then what we'll do once these are dry uh and fully ready to go we'll bond to this area and repaint it and even though you'll never really see this piece i just felt it was important we've come this far to make this game look great why not go all the way and do a proper job completely from top to bottom so to make sure everything was even again we went ahead and put our restore control panel on it as well as eventually the marquee and we were really really happy with how this all turned out uh, so the next step really is that once it's finited in the top bracket here is uh, bondoed and fixed we're going to paint the sucker and go ahead and put the side art on we're getting very close here to a finished restoration it's taken a while to get to this point but gosh it's starting to look really great i couldn't be happier with this Now this is a 60-in-1 multi-game arcade board, and it's probably the most common 
of these multi cape boards that's around. And multi cape game boards have some distinct advantages and disadvantages. The first advantage is they're relatively inexpensive. These 60 in one boards, which are common for games you may see on Craigslist or eBay, under 40 bucks for one of these little boards. Something nicer like a Pandora's box or a 412 in one board, like what I have running behind me in the cabinet here. Uh, well under $200 you can have one of these. Obviously it plays more games and they tend to do a slightly better job emulating the games than the 16 one which is kind of crummy. Uh, you know also keep in mind like as much as I would love to own every arcade game title that's ever existed that's never gonna happen so when I have people come over for parties or get-togethers maybe they want to play a game a more obscure game I don't have or don't have any interest in collecting or maybe once in a while you want to play that game you can do it in one of these multi-game cabinets. Now the, the disadvantage with these is that one, they're emulators. So they emulate the original technology. So sometimes there's some slowdown or audio dropout issues. They may not necessarily play the game as well as it was intended to on the original hardware. Technically also they're not legal. Uh, these games are still under copyright and trademark of a lot of the original manufacturers and these games are manufactured on the multi-game platforms without their permission. The biggest problem probably for arcade game collecting fans and restoration purists is a lot of times these original arcade cabinets are sacrificed and destroyed to make these multi-games instead of restoring them back to what they were. Now, there's some ways around this, like take for instance the Star Hitman Jr. behind me, which is running a 412 one What I've done is this game is wired for JAMA, but it's easily fixed back to Junior. In fact, I have not only the original control panel, but the original board and monitor downstairs. So if I wanted to switch this back to a legitimate Junior, I could do it like that. I haven't done anything intensely permanent to it. it you could probably switch it out in about 10 minutes. This is a just a piece of junk control panel I made specifically for when I have my 412 one in there. So what's the better way to do this? Well, there's some other ways you can do this without being quite as intrusive to the original game. One of the ways to kind of protect the integrity of the original arcade game and still play multiple games is the use of an arcade PCB switcher. These switchers come in all sorts of varieties. I have one that runs in the Nintendo Versus cabinet we have that allows four different Nintendo Unisystem boards to be played at once, which actually equals eight different games since those PCBs are double-sided. Um, these multi-game switchers are available for lots of different dedicated cabinets and especially for JAMA, and they don't require any sort of modification normally to the original hardware or the internals of the game or the control panels or any of those kind of things. Now, if you're really fortunate, you have a system that's a cartridge-based system, say like a Play Choice or a Neo Geo, there are all sorts of multi-game cartridges that are also available. So instead of collecting like hundreds of Neo Geo games, you can get one of these multi-carts. And these also vary in cost and quality a lot of times. Uh, this is a very inexpensive 161 and one cart from China. And it does a pretty good job, but like most emulating kind of devices, there's some dropout, there's some games that don't quite play as well as you would hope, um, but they're inexpensive and they're convenient and it helps you get more usage out of the actual upright cabinet that you may probably already own. One of the better alternatives to this is a system that utilizes modern components, but actually retains the original code and processing power in a whole new board system. And that was achieved a lot of different ways, but famously through the J-Rock series of boards that were available, which unfortunately seem like they're out of production. I have no idea if they're ever gonna go back into production. But this is a J-Rock board for the Williams cabinets. And see, here we can play, you know, Stargate, Defender, Robotron, Joust, all the classic kind of Williams games from the early 80s. But it actually is not an emulator. It utilizes a version of the real original hardware on a much smaller board. The downside of this is one, you have to modify the control panel a lot of times to accommodate all these different games. And two, this is not a plug and play device for older hardware a lot of times. The fact that this uh, JRock board is JAMA based. So uh, I had to take all the Stargate material out to install this. Now the good news, at least 
for again for at least this game is I still have all that original material so if I wanted to switch it back I could do it it would be a little more difficult to do this than the Junior Donkey Kong that we have out in the other room of the arcade but these are a great way to maintain the original integrity of the program at least without any of the issues that you run into with emulation my Mikey cabinet which has a six-way switcher in it that allows six different JAMA base games to be in there and I have adapters to play these Konami titles. And in here I have put my Big Kit, which again is much like the J-Rock where it's not technically an emulator. It actually recreates these games using very similar hardware-based kind of components on the board. So you get a much more authentic experience as far as gameplay. You don't have the problems that you run into with emulation. I really like the Big Kit, and I'll tell you why. One, uh, the menu system is very easy to navigate. It's very attractive, and it's highly adjustable, and it's highly customizable. You can add or subtract the games that you wish. Now, this Big Kit will not just play any arcade ROM or game. It's specifically designed to mostly play Pac-Man-based games, or games based on Galaxy hardware, which is all Z80 based processing games. It's also very easy to upgrade and upload new firmware and ROMs because the newest version of the Big Kit is Bluetooth enabled, so you can just do it from your laptop right in front of the machine. It's super, super easy. I also really dig that the games on here are not necessarily the most common games you see in arcade game collectors so you're not going to find galaga or you know like miss pac-man on this but instead you'll find games you know like jump bug or like uh, turtles which is a great konami game that most people uh don't really think about much anymore or triple punch which is uh re was released by thomas automatics the same code he made that little countertop but i originally bought this to put in that little thomas automatics countertop that we talked about i guess an episode or two ago but um for some reason i couldn't quite get the bit kit to perfectly sync with that monitor and i don't think it's a bit kit's part fraud although you do do a little fine tuning with this it's the fault of the monitor in there is kind of a weird monitor. It's a Wells Gardner 4800, which is kind of a stopgap product for them. And just for some reason, it just won't sync um, correctly. So, but that's okay. And all you do with this, um, let's let me let me play a game. I'll show you. Okay, so if I want to play a game, I just choose using the joystick, either left or right. And uh, lots of games to choose from. I think we fit up to 20 on here. So we'll play Nibbler, which is a pretty uh, pretty great game that I'm not very good at. And it just boots up by pressing the player one, and it boots just like the real real deal. And then if I want to actually um, coin up, I can either put a coin in there or I can hit the player two button twice, and it just comes up. And it just plays like the real game, which I'm not very good at. But... Um, yeah, it's just a ton of fun, this thing. And if I get tired of playing Nibbler and I want to go back, I can just hold the first player and second player just for a second. I can't hold it down too long or that switches the switcher in it, and it goes back to the main menu. So then maybe I want to play Pioneer Balloon, which is kind of a fun game uh, where you can bomb. <laughs> for some reason, you can bomb. Uh, this guy is here in the cart wagons. And of course, since it's a, a modern device, it will save your high scores and your customizations if you have certain um, setups for each game as well. So just a great, great addition. It runs on JAMA. It's small. It's under $200. I highly recommend the Big Kit. Uh, it's just a great experience, and it's a great way to kind of expand your arcade experience if you only have a couple games relatively inexpensive and uh, easily. So that's all I have for this particular episode of the show. Uh, next time we're going to 
start getting even closer to a completely finished Simpsons. I've got some other projects that we're going to probably start working on. And who knows, I may end up buying some new project because I'm insane. And we may take a look at some maintenance issues also on some of the games upstairs next time. So until then, hope you're safe, hope you're sane. Uh, make sure you're still social distancing, wear a mask in public. You know, um, it's a safe thing to do, guys. So don't, don't get mad for no reason. Keep everyone safe. So until then, see you next time. Happy hunting.